What is up, YouTube? McIntyre here. Today we're jumping into the next character, Anubarak. You know, one thing about this character that I think makes him really good is his spell armor. So, Nerubian armor giving spell armor. One thing to remember with him is because of this, he is very good versus characters that do magic damage. In this case, Alarak, Nova. As you can see, the Alarak comboed me there. It doesn't really do any damage. Uh, so if you're ever going to take it in Uberak, one thing to remember is, is that he does have the ability to kind of absorb a lot of magic damage. And the other thing that he does really well is he, he has two forms of CC. So like Tyrande, for example, here, um, her Q usually can cleanse, right? One person's ability damage, but uh, she can't, she, she can technically cleanse too, uh, but being able to provide two forms of CC from one character, I mean, that's a lot that she has to deal with, right? Um, so that's the other thing about a new Brack, you know, in comparison to something like Murden, where Stormbolt is only going to connect once, Toronto's is only going to have to use one Q for that. Uh, kind of shuts down his kit too. A new Brack, you know, can, can threaten two, even three with his web. Uh, so, for me, I think Anubarak has always been pretty good versus the Tyrant. Uh I know she's a problem support a lot of the times, and there's only so many answers against her. But if you do have a Tron on the other team and you feel like you can play the Anubarak well, I think that it is a do to play the Anubarak. It's unfortunate that I have to soak here for my team. But I think their team is technically losing XP here bottom or top because their wave is bigger than ours and it's just killing up all these minions if you guys remember you know sometimes it's better not to push the wave if the other team's not going to rotate then they're going to get xp behind and you can see that here being utilized so it's hard to say which level four i should take i think better barbs is best here they do have a lot of melee this will give me some sort of self peel for myself uh exoskeleton is really good on maps where you're like running around you got to run away uh, but I think for this map, because you kind of are stationary uh, and you're fighting over a point, a do would be to go better barbs. Uh, I think a do not would be like Legion of Beetles. You could technically, technically in a weird, weird world, argue that Beetles is very good versus the Nova because her snipes can't hit you through the Beetles, right? The Beetles are just spawning, her snipes can't hit you. And against the Murd and Stormbolts, you could kind of argue that as well. Um, but I think the Beta Barbs, you know, putting a Q here and that slow that that's going to provide is, is, is really powerful. We've gotten the percentage. That's pretty good. Yeah, see, my Beetle just ate that Murd and Stormbolt. We'll go on this. There's the bed of barbs getting value. I I eat in there because my Tychus was getting engaged on. So I eat in with the intention of, you know, if they're going to get to my Tychus, I need to, a lot of the times with tanks, you need to go on them if they're going on you, right? It's better to respond with something aggressive like an engage then it would be to all right i got the break then it would be to like back up and try to peel because they'll have to worry about you right at that point oh this is gonna be a big big e yeah so so we'll definitely take the reduced cooldown on our shield uh that way we can maintain spell armor more often uh, Subterranean Shield is is a decent talent as well. I think since they changed the spell armor to give you spell armor when you have shield up, the CDR talent at 7 C just makes a little bit more sense, right? You can keep that shield up more so you can have that magic resist out more. But Subterranean Shield does technically give you a bigger shield. So if the other team is dealing a lot of damage outside of spell and the spell damage isn't like their main source, like in this case, it's pretty much their main source. I mean, Nova Alarak... Diablo charge, right? All these things are their big damage. 
spells. Uh, oh my gosh, I hate that bug where it targets heroes instead of the robot. Um, you know, those are those are like main main damage sources. That's a real one. Another really good way to get the engage too is if you trust yourself, hit your E, and then when the E knocks him up, you can go for the Q, right? Because they're knocked up. So it, it kind of changes your CCs together. I might be able to hit that. Like that right there. This is not good though. I'm gonna have to juke some things. <clears throat> I think even just juking the Alarag pool there alone was enough to survive. Get the double glove. But yeah, the subterranean shield technically gives you a bigger shield. Because you can stack it. So you can absorb more, you know, auto attack damage. Either let's say the other team has a gray man or something along those lines, right? Then Uh, another thing that you can always think about doing as a new rack, and this is a do, this is something that I don't think I see enough a new rack players do enough, uh, is you are very, very, very good at just pushing buildings. Um, the fact that you can produce your own. Look at that, it, it literally didn't deal damage. Is this the real one? It was. I'm just gonna cocoon this guy here. <clears throat> See if my team can come kill him. He probably queues down to this. So just be ready for that. There we go. I think he dies here. Getting these souls would be so very good. Perfect. Um, but yeah, you, you create your own beetles, right? Uh so like if I wanted to dive, let's say this strand. If I use my cooldowns and go after her, or this is Alarak, right? If I use my cooldowns, and let's say there's no minions around, I'm still going to be able to dive as long as I hit my buttons. Spawn out the spawn out the beetles. So that's really good. Um, Something else that I just thought about. So here, even, for example. Time traps are another thing to tank towers, but beetles do too. Oh, this could be bad. This could be really bad. I am completely in. My whole team has backed. At least I have my healer here. So I should be fine on that alone. As long as... Yeah, as long as the Lili's here, this is good. So I'm just gonna hold mana up for dig out. Oh, never mind. He's gonna kill himself. One thing that a noob rack in general is good at is escaping. So if your team's ever running away, you can step into the other team as long as your E is up. Because in most cases, you can E over a wall. E is unstoppable, so there's nothing that the other team can do outside of get to the other end of your E. Uh, a lot of the times, though, it, it's better to kind of like step in and try to get the other team to hit you, or you know, you can finish that fort hit because you know you can dig out, right? Um, that is one thing a new brack does does really well because his E is unstoppable, right? Unlike a Diablo charge, you know, Diablo charge can get ETC W'd or Lucio booped, right? Whereas a new Rack's E cannot. Same goes for uh, Murden. Murden's jump as well. I'm gonna look to wrap the Tyrant. Uh, I wanted to wrap the Tyrant up there. A, a little thing that you can do in try mode if you're really interested in a new Rack as well. Um, Okay, Acid Drench at 13 usually. Burning Rage is not terrible either. That's Counter Strike down. Another thing you can do when you web engage. Oh, this is not good. This is... The Beatles, spawn Beatles, please. Oh, the Jugs are too far away. That was a good play by them. <laughs> that guy thinks I dove. I got flip charged. Haymaker. Um, one thing that you can do with your cocoon is, and again, I was saying you could go into try mode to practice it. Essentially, when you cocoon someone and they're coming out of the cocoon, as long as your Q is underneath them while they spawn out, it will hit them okay so 
it's hard to explain. Maybe I can get a, a situation where you'll, you'll get to visually see it. If you want to rewind from here and go back to when we were ganking the Diablo, you can see that time window. But essentially, you don't want to cast it as it expires. You want to cast it bef right before it's going to expire. Does that make sense? Um, that way, you get... I'm going to just wrap this trond, actually. Now they don't have heals. Oh, I proc is unstoppable. That way, you will actually get the sun off. This Merton still has Haymaker, but I have a turret this time if he chooses to Haymaker me. Yeah. I was ready. This is the Nubarak in full force. The Beetle's on deck. Ooh, and I got the Q on the Diablo charge. A great example of the E being unstoppable, but Diablo's Q not being unstoppable. I can get hit by effects like that. As long as I get my shield off, I don't think I can die here. Lili being in the thing is a little monk ass, but we're fine. Just keep applying the pressure. You really never want to dig in if you think you're going to die. So whenever I, like, I see someone's kind of standing up by themselves or, you know, my team can really follow up, I'll go in. So a lot of people might disagree. Maybe most people do. Epicenter is just, I think, the best here. Debilitation is okay. Uh, but I think just having a CDR on your E is just super powerful. And it makes it easier to land even. So... I think it's just the best 16 talent. Easier to land. Reduce cooldown. Can't really engage here. Especially with that Lili and the robot. You don't want to engage if you don't have support. Uh, a lot of the a lot of tank players need to respect their support players. Um, if their support player is there, then they can be aggressive, right? But in some cases, if there's no support, then you kind of can't engage, right? But I guess you... I say respect your support because, you know, they're going to heal you, right? They're going to cleanse you. You have to trust that. You have to trust that, you know, this Lily is going to hit her jugs. You have to trust that she's going to give me the W. She's going to cleanse me. Um, so I need to play like that. Uh, a lot of the times tank players just play really scared and they don't create opportunity for their team. And a lot of that comes from the lack of trust between them and the support so here you know we want to look out we want to watch out for that new or that murden he did take haymaker that's something we can worry about i can watch him myself even if he looks like he's going to do something i can web him i'm just looking at the murden and the diablo really that's where most of my focus is i do realize that the alarak and toronto are up top but they're not my main concern a lot of like a lot of my eyes and attention are on these two right now. Still trying to protect from that haymaker play, especially you know it's one of those gimmicks that works like once, right? And then the other team's like, oh, he took haymaker. <laughs> so you know even right now engaging like I can't dig in here, right? I can stand here. And if this Murden feels like he wants to Haymaker me in, then, you know, we'll laugh because we'll just E away. But the worst thing that I can do, and this is adapting to your situation, is try to E in with the Murden around when there's a fort or a keep, right? Because he's just going to Haymaker me in. That's what we have. That's what happened to us top. And that's what would happen to us here if we chose to engage. I'm going to web him. I don't, want, I don't want him to Haymaker anyone. We're just going to hit the building. He still might haymaker someone. Ah, uh, he's gonna... Okay, there's no building anyway, so it doesn't matter. Ooh, try to stun his jump. Quest completed. A little late. I think we just back up here. Get robot. Let me just get robot and win. Heals up too. Get turret, get heal. I'm gonna go directly to the point. So their team is going to get 16. 
16 19 i mean it's a three level lead it's our game to lose at this point pretty much but they will get that 16 fight again there are a few things that you know as a tank player a lot of the time you need to kind of be able to not isolate but figure out what the other team needs to do to win in this case a big alarat combo can win them a fight or a big haymaker as we see uh these are the two things that we needed to worry about just gonna web that diablo so you just don't have to think about it at all a double stun nice so if I had taken the speed talent at four uh, for shield, I would have sp sped after this guy to run him down. That should be GG, but I didn't need to do that. But again, I, as I was, you know, I kind of, I kind of had figured out what their play would be there. Um, as I was explaining it to you guys, you saw it kind of unfledge itself. Um, looking at the 20s, it's typically just always rewind. You can take hardened shield, but the fact that with rewind you get a double shield anyways, and you get like over five seconds of CC, is just too powerful for a tank. And one of the main reasons why Anubarak is so good actually is this 20 power spike. You can you know dig in aggressively, stun, shield yourself, rewind, Q again, and then you either can E further into them. Or you can E away and get away because of that unstoppable. So, so going over now as we reflect on this game, we'll go to the scoreboard. I'll show you the build really quick. As we reflect on this game, um, some things that you want to do as a new brack, uh, you want to you know look for the build, uh, the diving of towers, right? If there's one person they're weak and you dig in, a lot of the times it nets kills. You saw their top Murden headbutted me in. I was ready with not only my turret, but with beetles to kind of absorb the fort shots and dive the Tyrant. Uh, so we were able to pick up kills there, right? The other thing that you want to do is, you know, think about what wins them the fight before the fight happens. What do you need to be aware of? And then web or cocoon accordingly. In that case, with the Murden jumped over, I could have technically cocooned the Murden, right? Um, the other thing that I could do is cocoon the Alarak because he's going to follow up on the, the Murden Haymaker, right? You need to cut a tie to one of their win conditions within a fight. Uh, a lot of the time, that's a good way to respond as uh, Anubarak, right? Um, figure out what they do and what wins in the fight, and then you have a button that says, all right, I'm going to turn this win condition off in a team fight, right? Um, the do nots of Anubarak, and you saw it even here in this game. When you dig in, you need to make sure that you are going to kill something or you are not at risk. Once your E is down on a new brack, the gates are open. The other team can engage on you. Um, you saw I dug in. I got a pretty good dig, but then I got flipped by Diablo. I got charged. I got haymaker and then I was underneath the fort without an escape. So be mindful of that when you dig in. Otherwise, you can get just full engaged on. A lot of the times, I'll even, you'll see on my stream, if a new brack digs down, I'm calling to kill a new brack because he no longer has any way to really keep himself alive or safe once he's used his E. So that is the biggest do not for this character. Um, the other is really be mindful of when you're in your posture, how much damage you're taking on this guy because he doesn't have any sustain. It's not like a Diablo or an ETC or a Murden pass. There's no, there's no healing mechanic outside of his shield, right? So if you're shielded and the the enemy starts hitting you past your shield damage, that damage sticks a lot of the time. So those are my do's and do nots. Um, if you guys have any further questions about Nubarak, let me know in the comments below. Check me out on Twitch and Twitter. That'll be in the description. I have a stream schedule up. I'll also put that down in the description as well. I'm trying to record games with you guys on my stream. So if you guys wanna be a part of this series, come check that out. You can always check me out on heroesearth.com. That'll be a link below for my tier list builds and all that, as well as the build, as you can see on the screen. I'll have that up on the site as well. But that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Again, thank you all so much. And until the next time, I'll see you then. Cheers.